Well, you know what's coming up next week, don't you, Hector? Another scary story. Halloween. Yeah, Halloween, that's right. So I guess that's how you picked out your title, because I noticed it says it's midnight. Right. You know where your dad is. And I figured we'd have something scary, because, yeah. you know, it's a scary time of year. Right, so. yeah. Actually, anytime you're on the internet today. Stop talking about the election. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. We were entering, yeah, it was what, two weeks before the election? So yeah. that's another scary thing that's yeah, coming yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. You know, every time I think about this whole subject, we've been writing about it for almost five years now. Yeah. And... This subject has gotten more interesting, mm -hmm. but it's also gotten more scary. <laughs> well, yeah. It's not getting less scary, it's getting more scary. So before we get deep into it, I mean, we're going to tell you about what you can do to help please protect your data. And what most people don't really realize today, because you hear people say, you know, I got my data here, and my, mm -hmm. it's on the cloud, and I got my picture. Actually, you don't have as much control as you used to have. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so the big deal is, how do you control pr and protect your data that you don't have direct control of? Mm -hmm. That's going to be the subject of this show. So before I get into that, I want to give the call-in number. It's 213-943-3808. That's 213-943-3808. Of course, you can also reach us by going to workintheweb2win.com. There you'll find links to Blogger, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube. And you can also find us on Instagram, Instagram and Pinterest. So check those things out. Our sponsor all year has been Vibrant uh, Life Health Center. It's a first-class chiropractic center here in Jacksonville that they do you know, whole person you know, analysis. Yeah, it's, it's, it's holistic medicine. It's holistic yeah. medicine. So functional medicine, you go there for what's ailing you, and they have ways of taking care and helping you. And if there's something that they can do, like a surgery or something, they mm -hmm. have doctors that they work with that can take care of you. They have a new show called Life in Balance. That's right. And it comes out on Thursdays. You can see that the show's on their Facebook feed, and you can also see it on their YouTube feed. And, of course, it's on Blog Talk Radio. I think it comes on at, like, 4 o'clock on Thursday, something like that. So check that out. And, of course, check out their website and their blog. It has lots of really good articles mm -hmm. and all kinds of really cool stuff. So people ask, you know, what's the big deal about, you know, protecting your data and all that kind of stuff? Well, the big deal for me today is there's lots of data... It's almost like you don't own it. So, right. for example, we were a blogger. We write, we've got like 250 blogs. Yep. <laughs> but guess what? If Google ever got mad at us, they yeah. could like make all that stuff disappear in the blink of an eye. And same thing with you, you're uploading videos to YouTube. Yep. They get pissed off at you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We've, we've had a pull a few for you know, one reason or another. That right. can happen. And again, Google's sort of a fickle animal. They're like changing their minds weekly. Yeah, so and, we've noticed. And Facebook ain't a hell of a lot different. I mean, these yeah. guys, you know... They're like making it up as they go. That's the reality. So you're putting your pictures out on Picasso or Google My Photos or wherever the heck it is you're using, mm -hmm. iCloud, whatnot, right. and all of a sudden that stuff just disappears. Yeah, what the hell do you do? What, what, what really irked me was, you know, <laughs> for all this time they're telling you to get, you know, you got to get Google uh, reviews, get Google reviews, get Google reviews. And then the other day it's like, what happened to the stars? Well, we don't look at Google reviews anymore. It's like, yeah. what? Google, Google doesn't look at their gold Google reviews. That's and they just changed that like two or three months ago, and they didn't tell anybody. No. They didn't say, "Hey, we're stopping. We're not looking at Google reviews anymore." So yeah, don't don't, don't, don't use Google Plus. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's really sort of crazy. And again, these big companies do things in a fickle way, and they're not telling you anything. Right. So one of the most important things that you have to understand is you have to be self reliant. That's right. If you're not self reliant, somebody's going to screw you. Yeah, you got to carry your own water. Right. They're not going to help you. And like you said, what happens is you get blindsided. Right. You You're, find out after the fact. You find out after the fact, four months after the stuff disappeared yeah. or something. You're like, ah! So here's here's the deal. You know, you're on the web, and everybody pretty much in the U.S. is doing something on the web. Mm -hmm. They may not be doing all of these, but they're doing something on yeah. the web. And your data is out there whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. So even if you're not a real techie person and you're using the, the Internet for all kinds of stuff, by law, you have to have your data on the web. Yep. So, for example, when Obamacare was passed, it says now you have to have insurance. And how do you sign up for that? Online. You go, <laughs> yeah. you got to go online yeah. and sign up for and it. And this is after they screwed up their website how many times? And, and how many times? Hundreds of millions and, of dollars. It was, I remember we did a show yeah. because it was one. It was the scariest thing that mm. Halloween because it had been hacked he so was, many times. Called it Obama scare. Yeah. <laughs> so. Government entities. You have a social security number. Right. 
Your information's on the yeah, web. It's out there. It's out there. You have a bank account. Mm -hmm. It's on the web. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you use eBay, Amazon, PayPal. Who doesn't? Right. If you have a Gmail account, mm -hmm. a Yahoo account, yep. a Hotmail account, yep. uh, you have Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google Plus, Instagram, Pinterest. Your stuff is out there. That's right. And it's not your stuff, it's really their stuff. That's right. Uh, so, the big thing I'm telling to tell you guys is you have to figure out ways to be, get back control of these things. And I'm not telling you not to use them. Yeah, or, I'm or, just or, saying or you have to come... The, or get one of these sirens. They, yeah, they work really right. well. Yeah. Well, it's Halloween. They're going to, they're going to do, you know, they're probably trick-or-treating with a hose or something. <laughs> Um, but you you need to have security. So security comes in multiple levels. Mm -hmm. The first level of security should be with things that you have control over. That's right. Your computer, your smartphone, your tablet. Yeah, but those you know the problem is most people don't have any control of us. Right. <laughs> they think they do. Right. Well, here's the thing. Most people are not even trying to protect those right. things. There's lots of studies that show that 25% oh, yeah. of the people have nothing. Oh, yeah. If you ask the average Apple owner... Yeah. They'll say, I don't have any antivirus. Yeah. Well, you, I don't need it. You heard about the big, uh, massive internet outage on Friday? Yeah. Okay. And, and that was actually, you know, you know what carried that out? Those were all zombie bots that were mostly done on a lot of these people. You know, they have the, uh, the Internet of Things, the IoT devices, right. because most of those things have absolutely no right. protection. So what they did was they had this whole army of these bots that just went and just hit one of the big nodes that was one yeah. of the big internet providers. So for, for you guys who don't understand what, exactly what he's talking about, if you have a smart TV, it can become a zombie TV. That's right. If you have a smart refrigerator, That's it right. can become a zombie refrigerator. Yeah. And it keeps on doing what you normally do, but right. what it's doing also is carrying out mayhem online right. at somebody else's And behest. that attack that happened last week was carried out by zombie bots. They were actually on IoT devices, Internet That's right. of Things That's right. devices. And Guess what? You can have all these Internet of Things devices, but there's no antivirus for them. You no. can't buy an antivirus right. for your TV. That's right. There's not one for your refrigerator. Yeah. If you have an Amazon Echo, how do you protect that? Now, I, later on, maybe we get to the three big bytes. Google now just on LLMs, their own little right. smart speaker AI thing. Yeah. Uh, how do you protect that device? Right. Okay, so people have their houses wired so that they can say, turn on the lights and turn yeah. on the TV. Unlock and the that. door. Right, I love the garage. Right, but how, there's uh, no antivirus right. for any of that stuff. Yeah, and that attack was people went out and specifically targeted those devices, and then used a zombie attack uh -huh. to shut down parts of the internet. That's right. So I mean, I mean, we're talking about like I, I, Netflix was affected by right. this. I mean, they're a big, big company. Right. You know, when those kind of guys, so I think a couple of the uh, social nets even had some problems right. with it. Right. Because they were just attacking their their communications nodes right. with those things. And they got overwhelmed, and then they couldn't. They were transmitting, but there was too much bandwidth being used. That yeah, was called a denial of service. Right, so a denial of service attack. So, again, these are things that you have to think about. So, one of the things you ought to be doing is when you're using Trend Micro or Norton, wherever you need to call those people, and say, "Hey, where's the antivirus for my TV?" That's right. Okay. Why can't you develop one for that? Right. I mean, they developed them for the smartphones, although it took them like three years before they had the first one out for a smartphone. Right. They have them for tablets. There's no reason why they can't develop them for those devices also. Yeah. Heck, that, that sounds like a real niche market, you know? And on top of you that... you've got more IoT devices than computers. Right. And on top of that, all of those devices <laughs> usually self-update themselves. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason why Samsung and whoever right. can't update those devices so that they, you know, they got some protection, some kind of protection. Because, because what's really, you know what's really scary about that attack? Not only did they pull off the attack, you know what they did right afterwards? They published the source code. Yeah, so anybody, so anybody that probably wants can to do, do it. it. Right. So again, when we talk about security, that's a biggie. Again, you if you're not if if you're not securing the devices that you have control over, you're part of the problem. But, and, and you know you know what it comes down to. You know, during the early part of, of the, uh, the the 19th century, they actually there were a lot of anarchists that were out there trying to you know th overthrow the governments, blowing yeah. things up. Well, now it's digital anarchy. Right. And like I said, when you go start publishing this stuff. Open source online. What do you think everybody's going to do? Oh, and there's lots of anarchists. Most people don't really understand. I mean, there's a lot of people. You don't need a bomb, right? You don't need bombs All anymore. You need code. All you need is some code. And if and there's a lot of smart anarchists that 
you know, they're nighttime hackers are out there doing this crazy stuff, and they don't have to necessarily go directly against you. If they do a denial of service and your 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 favorite thing is Netflix, because that's the only TV sh shows you, you watch, have, yeah. you're screwed. Okay, you're still paying your fee to Netflix, but yeah. you're losing. But when out. they put it out on uh, on the internet like that with the with the source code, then that means anybody that wants to get in on the on the party can. And before you know it, you, you get you know thousands of people to start doing that. And this, you can bring uh, the whole thing down. And just uh, so you guys know, anybody also means China, Russia. Saudi Arabia. I mean, anybody. Wherever, yeah, anybody. Anybody. They're, they're African tribes that want to go out there and do this kind of stuff. You know. So. So kid down the street. Because, you know, the more the Americans, again, they're showing you how to go out and start to infect all these IoT devices, which you're basically just out there asking to get hit. So we wrote a couple articles recently. It wasn't very long ago. One of them was uh, the state of the Internet privacy and security in America. And the other one was the crypto crunch ransomware run amok. And these are two articles that you definitely ought to read. They have a lot of really good, useful information about right. security in them. Uh, both of them have lots of tips, and I'll talk a little bit more about later on yeah. in the show. But you need to implement those tips. If you want to be able to protect yourself in any way, shape, or form, yeah. you know, some protection is better than none. Mm -hmm. And again, the way these things happen today, if you get ransomware, they can literally fleece you. Right. And worse than that, they can get your ID and then triple fleece you. Now you become a persona non grata right you know if you will plus you know most people keep all of their their credit card information their banking right. information right. so you're just giving them the keys to the vault right so when we're talking about those security things the number one thing you ought to do you ought to have a really good password no more than it's your child's birthday or any of that kind of stuff it should be a minimum eight digits of some kind upper and lower case mm -hmm. mixed special characters that mm -hmm. kind of stuff I would say 12 should be your minimum today because it's much harder to crack that 12-digit thing. Right. And if you're having trouble remembering what it is, come up with something that has a mnemonic in it that you've right. created that doesn't have anything to do, that seems sort of random to the average person, but it has a special meaning to you. Yeah. 12 digits long, that's a really good start. And start using that on your Facebook and your Twitter and your LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. the reality is the way people get to you is they can guess that password if it's Minnie, Mickey Mouse. Right. I mean, that's, that's really the big deal there. Um, and minimize the AI stuff. I mean, again, a lot of this stuff, I like AI. I mean, yeah, I we have, say we have an echo. <laughs> we have an echo in there, but, you know, echo ain't on half the time. You yeah. know? And I don't have my credit card programmed into echo so it can automatically buy a pizza for me and stuff like right. that either. Yeah. I tell people that if you're using a smartphone and you don't have an antivirus, anti smartware thing on there, you're 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 shooting yourself in the foot. Now I hear Apple people say, "Well, my phone's encrypted." Well, I, I usually ask them, "Well, do you have it locked?" No, I don't need it locked. <laughs> Hell, if you don't need it locked, if you have encryption and it's not locked, it's not encrypted. Right. Because if I pick up your phone and just touch the screen, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> the encryption don't mean crap. Right. So if you if you have encryption, lock it. Yeah. And guess what? Android phones have had encryption for two and a half years. Yeah. Okay, actually they've had it for four years, but it wasn't until two years ago that it was automatically enabled, right. and you had to disable it if you didn't <coughs> want it. But if it's not locked, you can't have it. And my, my new phone, a lot of the new phones have fingerprint decryption, right. so I can unlock mine by just grabbing it. Right. So the thing about convenience or whatever, and you don't want to use a, a you know, punch code to unlock it, is crap. It's, it's a... If you want to protect your phone and you put it, and you put your life on the phone, right. if you have your life on, on your phone, phone right. you better be protected. Right. I mean, it's yeah. that simple. Well, I mean, I mean, look at it this way. I mean, do you, do you walk around normally with you know all your money just you know in your hand? Yeah, you don't do that. No. But your so phone. Is somebody come up and grab it. But if you got your phone, yeah, all your money's thing. in your hand. Yeah. So it's a fingerprint thingy right there. You just touch the fingerprint thing and you're in. Or if it doesn't like your fingerprint because mm -hmm. it's smudged or you got you know, dunk on or something. Yeah. You could still type in yeah. a key code. And it's not a big inconvenience. No. I have, I've never found where I couldn't answer the phone right. fast enough when it did that. Right. So make sure you do that. The next thing we need to talk about is backing up stuff. So you can back up your computer. There's lots of backup software options out there. Right. There's all kinds of hardware devices. Generally, hardware is cheap. Right. I mean, you can get a 128 gig thumb drive mm -hmm. for, you know, $69 or something yeah. like that. It's 128 gigs. That's enough to hold the Encyclopedia Britannica. Right. Okay? On a teeny little device like that. They got cards now that do that kind of stuff. 
You can get those cards that go on your phone that hold that money. Right. You can make your phone your backup device for mm -hmm. your computer if you wanted. Right. You can make your phone your backup device for Google Drive or Microsoft Cloud or right. iDrive. or what. You, you can back up that stuff to these chips pretty easily, and they're not very expensive. Hard drives are dirt cheap. Oh, yeah. You can get four terabyte hard yeah. drives for like you know $150 yeah. or something like that. So all this data that you got out there floating around in the world, you can download it and store it on these devices and put them aside. Right. Ideally, you want the backups to be automatic, right. <laughs> if at all possible. Yeah, because you'll Cause forget. Then you'll do it. If yeah. it's not automatic, a lot of times you won't do it. Um, my favorite is solid state drives. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a solid state drive, you can get portable solid state drives now. Mm -hmm. You just hook it up to whatever it is you want. And if you hook it up to your phone, you can download stuff to that hard drive. Right. Or if you hook it up to your computer or your tablet, because mm -hmm. a lot of these devices have where you can plug into them, Absolutely. you can back up stuff for days. And if you're not doing that, again, you're getting ready to shoot yourself in the foot. Now, one of the things I see people not doing, they're talking about, I have all my data on the cloud, and that's protected. Wrong. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, don't, you don't think Google could be hacked. Right. Right? Or Microsoft could be hacked, or Dropbox, or whoever. They all can be hacked. There's nobody who well, can't be and, hacked. And the thing is, too, is a lot of these things, like like when you're on Dropbox, when you're on Google Drive, there's basically interface with your computer anyway. So what makes you think that can't get infected with right. the same malware it's getting into your right. machine? So one of the things that we wrote about this, and in, the, in the, the ransomware article we talk about it, you have to have a backup that will provide multiple revisions of your data. Right. So in other words, I back up data today. Today's the 25th. Tomorrow's the 26th, I back up data again on the 26th. I need to have another revision of my data. So if ransomware comes in and snatches my stuff, yeah, can I back. can roll back to the 25th and tell the ransom guys to stick it in their ear. Yeah. Now hopefully you don't have sensitive information like your customer's credit cards on there, right. but then you're really screwed if that would happen. Yeah. Okay, so we don't keep any customer stuff on any of our computers here. No. <laughs> because one of them is we want to be PCI compliance with the credit card companies. But also, we don't want that responsibility. Yeah. Well, it's not a responsibility, okay. it's a liability. Yeah, a liability. Well, the, <laughs> that's probably a better way of saying it. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> like you pointed out in, in, in the blog, it's not a matter of if you're right. going to yeah. get hit, it's, it's a matter of when, when and how hard. Right. So, having a backup program that essentially gives you backups of your backups, right. okay? Right. And those revision backups are really good. There's several articles that are linked in the blog that takes you to list that here's a 10 different programs, here's what they right. do and here's what they don't do. Yeah. I'll also be With pricing and everything. Because a lot of the, like, like for instance, a couple of weeks ago, I went into my computer and it said, somebody logged in to your account. Right. And I'm thinking, was that Hector? And then I went and looked at it and it was like from Palatka. Right. So it's like, uh-oh. So I went in there right away and I changed the password right. and locked the dude out. At the end of the article, we talk a little bit about options above and beyond what we got going on here. Yeah. One of them is to always make sure you have additional email mm -hmm. and phone numbers in mm -hmm. your financial accounts. Mm -hmm. and That way, if something gets changed, you should have a checkbox mark yeah. that said well, something was changed. Alert me. I had a PayPal account. Same thing. They yeah. said somebody did this, and I, and I went right away on the phone. It's like, we, you know, danger, Will Robinson. Right. And, and I said, okay, what did they spend? And luckily, it was only like twenty bucks. I said, well, that wasn't me. Right. And the, the email because they said we changed. You changed your email address. It's like, no, I didn't. Right. So I went over, and we know we locked the damn door. But I mean, you know, if, if you don't keep track of that, or you, you ignore it, or you know, and he was lucky in that it, this person was not very sophisticated. Right. And realized that he needed to change all that other stuff. But again, but they had to lock me out. Right. You need to check those check boxes that say alert me if yeah. anything happens. Right. So and, and and then you got to react when you get the alert. Right. Don't be asleep at the right. switch. Because, you know, had I not looked at it for a couple of days, God knows what kind of mayhem mm -hmm. would happen. Right. Plus, as soon as he got in there and changed it, he could have just locked me out of the whole thing. Right. That's, that's, passwords, that's the big deal. And if you have a Facebook account or any of these accounts, you need to go in there and set the alerts to maximum security mm -hmm. and make sure you have those additional email accounts and phone numbers in there. The other thing is, I would tell you, if you don't have a LifeLock account or something like LifeLock, you should get one. Because, again, that's another way of being alerted that stuff is going on. Yeah, a couple of times I've gotten alerts from LifeLock. Luckily, it was right. nothing really... Right mattered but I checked you know so it's so good to have you somebody there to, watching you your need back you need to go and check and and you could set it so they call you and they send you an email mm -hmm. and a text mm -hmm. <laughs> so Shoot depending on whether you're a 
a millennial or a baby mm. boomer, where the hell are you going to pay yeah. attention to whatever it comes yeah. through? Yeah. Um, you know, backing up some of the things out there is sort of a pain. So say you have Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, maybe blog. How do you back up all those? Well, all of these social nets and stuff like that, they have ways where you can go in there and back that stuff up. You have to go in there, read the instructions, and then pull your hair out a little bit and try and do it. <laughs> <laughs> and and you'll get, you can get it back up, but it's not automated. Not, right. You'd have to do it all manual. But there's a product out there that really can help the average person if you have those things. And it'll do... Is it called Backup for Dummies? It's called Social social Safe, okay. of all things. <laughs> and it'll actually let you back up Facebook, Google+, Instagram, LinkedIn, huh. Pinterest, Twitter, and I think a couple other ones that I didn't yeah. mention. Cool. But again, once you've got it set up, it'll synchronize those yeah. with whatever main device you're using, like yeah. your computer and so on. Again, if you're going to do all this kind of backing up, you need to have terabytes of data. Yeah. The good news is terabytes don't cost squat. Right. I mean, you can get hard drives. That's why they give you free storage. That's why Google gives away, you know, Google Drive, 30 gigs or whatever they give you on there. And same way with uh, Dropbox, they give you five so, gigs. Speaking of watching your back, I noticed you forgot something on your blog. It says insert form here. Oh, yeah. I forgot to <laughs> do that later on. <laughs> Must have been at the sleep of the wheel. That okay. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Um, the good news about Social Safe. Yeah. $6.99 oh, wow. a year. That's, That's amazing. Like, now, I bet you that it won't be that price right. very long. long. So especially right. after the news goes out from the show, yeah. <laughs> that they'll be changing it. So if you've got Obamacare, if you've got Social Security, if you've got bank accounts, you need to go in there and set the alerts. Yeah. You need to go in there and get, um, I would say, LifeLock is what we have. Mm -hmm. um, and they have two levels of it. Even the $10 one mm -hmm. a month is pretty good. Uh, so I would tell you to get that kind of stuff. You can also get some of those free credit check things on top of it. But if you're not, if you're asleep at the wheel with this issue, you are going to become a victim oh, yeah. at some point in time so, in the near future. Yeah, either take care of it or don't bitch when right, you get bit because right. it's going to happen. Because not like only said, do we have... How, when they do it and how hard they do it. And it's, not, it's not only a matter of, you know, when, it's... It's escalating yes. because you not just have anarchists and right. stuff. You have, you know, Criminals. Russians and right. cyber and right. syndicates and yeah. China and yeah. get everybody and their brother. Right. This has what become the me. new what the new cheap weapon that uh, go after people. It is. It's the poor man's nuclear bomb. Right. The bottom line is what amazes me is the damn thing's still working. Yeah. Because it's just a matter of time. Right. You and know, if they were going to attack an infrastructure. The number one infrastructure you would want to attack the internet. is the internet, because in America, Everything people become really it. dependent on it. Yeah, you know, if you live in Botswana or whatever, yeah, you, you might know, not what care. the hell is the internet? Right. Yeah, I'm still trying to find wood to make a fire. Yeah, but here, <laughs> you know, if all of a sudden the internet went Boom. down, you'd hear a whole bunch of teenagers screaming. Right. That'd be your alert. That's like that siren that went by. <laughs> Listen for the screaming teenagers. So, That'll be the first warning that uh, digital Armageddon is on the way. So I would tell you, make sure you do that. Yeah. Now, having said that, you know, last week we did the three big bites, and I was Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Well, this week is Google, Google, Google. Okay. <laughs> because Google had their big event last yeah. last week, like yeah. uh, Facebook had theirs not very long ago. And they have a new chatty assistant. So if you have any kind of Google device, you'll right. know that there's Google, OK Google. Right. Well, they have a new version of OK Google that okay. does even more. Uh -huh. Supposedly, you can say... You know, make me reservations at this restaurant, stuff uh -huh. like that, and it'll go out there and do that. Make me a pizza, okay? Yeah. You're a pizza. I want to see it. Do that. And I, I, I think I mentioned even this last week that Google now has their own Echo competitor product right. called Google Home. Uh -huh. And it's like a little speaker. Uh -huh. So I'm wondering if they're going to go to lawsuits over this thing because yeah. it's a speaker. Right. So it seems like you're copying some kind of design yeah. thingy there. But well, no, yeah. Amazon not only has the Echo, they also have the Dot. Right. They actually have three versions yeah. of their device. Right. And, and Google's supposed to have multiple versions of theirs. But that's 129 Yeah. for theirs. And it's about it's much smaller. So the, the yeah, Echo one has a much bigger speaker system. Well, it all depends, too, because also uh, Echo is in their uh, Fire Stick. Right. Which so they have they TV. have a handheld one, that's yeah. right. And it works with their TV or whatever. But the Fire Stick one also works by itself, supposedly. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I know you can get multiple of those sticks. Right. And it will talk to the Google device right. that you have in your house. So yeah. instead of having five of them little boxes yeah. around, you could have five sticks or whatever. Um, they also announced a new phone called Pixel, which is essentially mm -hmm. a high-end Apple-type killer right. device, which they did not remove the 3.5-millimeter plug. So you don't have to just have Bluetooth right. for headphones and stuff like that. 
And they also announced a bunch of other things like their dream products and all those other kinds of stuff there. Um, if you if you do a search online for Google's latest and Google events, you'll yeah. see all those kinds of things. I know we're about six minutes. We want to make sure we get to the Worldwide Words because this is Halloween. the Halloween show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, what, what are you going to dress up for as Halloween? I actually have a shirt that says, this is my costume. There you go. I love it. <laughs> I love it. No, here, here's, here's one you haven't heard of all the time, though. It says, Wayward Pine, a man dressed as a tree arrested for blocking traffic. And it ain't even Halloween yet. <laughs> this is in Portland, Oregon, of all places. It says, Asher Woodworth was approached by officers with the Portland Police Department Monday when he appeared in a downtown street covered head to toe in evergreen boughs. So he was smoking some green. Yeah, I <laughs> guess so. You know, you think that would be like in Colorado or something, right? Yeah. It says, officers told the 30-year-old he was free to go as long as he stayed out of the way of traffic. And guess what he did? He went and stayed he went right back in traffic. traffic. So they went and arrested like him. Like I said, he was like on some green in the go. <laughs> he was green and... So that was the first one. The second one was kind of interesting. It was actually in Smithsonian.com. They had it's called the Strange and Mysterious History of the Ouija Board, which apparently came out right after the uh, Civil War, believe it or not. Yeah, I, I was going to say it's been around for a while because I remember when Edgar Allan Poe started talking about. Stuff. Well, and, and what was crazy too is that you know at first it was just a little you know novelty item, and then several businessmen got together. And, I mean, it took off like wildfire, and they say even today it sells millions of copies. But the weird thing was. The one guy, there was like a consortium of, of business people, and slowly but surely, the, the, the one uh, main um, maker, yeah, he decided to get rid of everybody else. But you know what happened to him a year later? He died. He died. <laughs> <laughs> Mysteriously. And, and somebody had a thing saying, you will be dying. <laughs> you know, think about it. Back in, in the 1800s, yeah. you know, like Lincoln yeah. would go to those seances yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So there were Ouija, I could You know, they're still doing research on it because there's something there. They can't quite tell what it is because they said literally they've even come up with bots that would basically just mimic what you're doing. And they said if you actually hold this thing, they don't know if it's some type of an autonomic response or what, but it will do things that, that – because they said one thing they do is one of the tests that they've been doing is they'll ask you like 50 questions or 100 questions. And typically – you're going to get like a 50-50 because it's yes or no question. So right. you're going to get like 50% right, 50% wrong. But they said when they have you put your hand on the Ouija board, it's 65% consistently correct. Wow. So something's there, and they haven't quite figured it out. But the problem is the one guy that wants to do some serious research into it, who's a scientist, says his big problem is, of course, other researchers I and, like even, poo -pooing and, his and even institutions <laughs> that would back this. You know what he's going to do? He's going to crowdfund it. be interesting to see what happens with that one. be interesting if he can raise money Crowdfunding. Yeah, you know, I mean, they've raised know. crazier things. Oh, you right. Remember the one guy that raised money? But like, for, but potato salad. I was going to say potato, potato salad, salad yeah. yeah. So anyway, that'd be a good one. Here's one that's kind of interesting. She had a skull in her possession, walking down the street with a real skull. Yeah, it was a, literally, it was it was a homeless woman found, was found carrying a skull down the street in Sacramento, California. It's like only California, Where the hell right? did the she get that skull? Well, yeah. exactly, and afterwards, they actually, you know, of course, they called in CSI, and, of course, there was the rest of the skeleton not too far away. So she found it, and they just... But you put it on a stick, and she's, like, walking around I was going to say, what was that, that Shakespeare Horatio? <laughs> yes, the last. The last. The last. <laughs> <laughs> Octavio or where the hell was Yorick. A Yorick, lot of Yorick. Yorick. I knew him well. So uh, it's just only in California, only right? Only in California. I know we're we're only getting close to the end of the show here. I want to remind all the listeners to definitely go to the Dropbox. Uh, there's lots of articles there that you can find, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the two articles that I mentioned earlier, which was the Crypto Crunch and the State of the Internet Privacy, both of the that one has like the, the State of Internet Privacy and Security in America has like 25 tips that you can use, mm -hmm. uh, or 25 articles that you can look up, and 18 tips, and then the, the ransomware one has another baker's dozens worth of stuff that you can use, plus this article has a right. bunch of tips that you could use too, so definitely go through and look at those. Um, if you're a, you know, a member of Club WQ, go to the Dropbox, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, next week's show? It's going to be called No If, Ands, or Bots. So we're going to be we're botting. Talking about, yeah, we're going to be talking about the, the basically the rise of the personal robot. And again, this is another one of the AI things. Yep. If they need to get some antivirus for your bots. That's right. <laughs> Think about it. You got a new bot, and he comes over here and bites you in the leg. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I, don't, I don't know we have much more other than that. Keep working the web, doing gang. Happy Halloween. And watch out for chicks with uh, skulls on a stick. Yeah. <laughs>